Okay. Hello for real. Hello for realsies this time. How are you all? Welcome, welcome to Saturday Morning Dugger. Um, my office is a disaster. You can't quite tell. You can see the dead body of a Barbie in the background, but like aside from that, yeah, it's real. I'm a real person <laughs> with dead Barbies in the back, okay? Just like, just like you, just like everybody else. Clark just wanted to play in my office basically all morning. So we've just been in here like working on the puzzle. Uh, it's because of this. Look, I, I made some more progress. Basically only one step left. So I did the seam on the bottom and attached it here. Cute, right? And then um, on the other side, all that I need to do is fold this over on the center line and stitch that and then add little clasps. But I think I might just like stitch it together up to a certain point. Cause I hate the idea of having to do like four little latches to attach it. I also think Clark will have no patience with that. But anyways, it's a, it's a Barbie dress. If you weren't here for, for study hall yesterday, you missed out on all the fun. We made a dress. <laughs> Or at least we started the process of making a dress for a Barbie. And then Clark was like, mommy, I love it. Um, now let's make a top for uh, my mermaid Barbie. And I was like, hmm, yes. Because <laughs> it turns out Clarky has um, a lot of mermaids, a lot of mermaid Barbies. People just keep getting them for her. <laughs> One sec. My husband sent me an I love you text message. Oh my God. My job interview yesterday went really well. I'm so glad. That's cute. You should date him. Oh my God, guys, stop it. <laughs> Yeah, my Neon Divide stuff came in the mail already. I was expecting to have to wait a while because of England, but um, not all of it is here though, to be fair. The the mug, the mug is here. Um, my hoodie is here. And one of the shirts I got for Sam is here, but uh, I also got Sam a hoodie and I got myself two t-shirts, so. I went, I went ham because I want to support. I was also very happy because I saw people in Discord being like, I'm watching the moral video and it's, it's very funny. <laughs> I was like, yay, I'm so glad. Yeah, so I'll, I've already transferred over. I'm, I'm a well-oiled machine now. Um, I already transferred over the footage in MP4 format over to this computer so I can edit it earlier. So episode three should come out earlier. Um, but last night's last night's episode was super fun because it was like a big wedding and also Kier added a shit ton of stuff to the cafe. The cafe was bumping like the entire episode. <laughs> it was mostly cafe RP, which um, you guys have said in the past sounds really fun to you. So um, and honestly, it was really fun for me because there was so much to do, you know. moral video did not trigger my motion sickness. That's so great. I'm so glad. No spoils, but the completionist video I did music for goes up this afternoon as far as I know. Oh, nice. Yeah, I saw you said you, you hit the deadline. Well done, my dude.
<laughs> um, Sam is taking Clarkie to a little class right now, so they're having some some father daughter time. It's very cute. Hi, what's up? Hey, Gorley. Why start on episode two? Um, because all of the footage for episode one got really messed up for a variety of reasons. So it was unusable, unfortunately. Um, it had a filter, on, a green screen filter on it by accident. So anything that was even remotely green in the world was see-through. <laughs> and then, um, uh, and then it also like didn't record some of the audio. So Weird and messed up is kind of your brand. <laughs> Not in this situation. <laughs> there would be no value to watching it whatsoever. Eh? How are you, Summer? Watson. Unwatchable as an in invisible, yeah. Yeah, there were huge chunks when I was going through the footage. I was like, well, how often was I around green, really? It turns out there's an entire huge area of the map that's all green. <laughs> Which I, you know, just forgot about in the moment until I was scrubbing through the footage. And I was like, oh, if I go in the grove, you can't see anything. Okay, <laughs> that's tight. positive vibes. I gotta escape the Elden Rage. Oh no. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you guys are enjoying the video. Yeah. Um, there are other characters that get up to like absolutely crazy shit every single episode. That is not moral. <laughs> it's a, ch it's a pretty chill time for moral. Maybe there will be exciting shit in the future, but generally moral's life is like you know, if stuff's going on on the map, then yeah, it's, you know, it affects everybody, but like. Moral is a non combatant and isn't like a shadow runner or anything. Shadow runner. <sighs> um, so. <laughs> yeah, the gun! If you want to, when I was talking about the coffee machine spawning guns, if you want to just, if that's all that you want to see, literally just watch the very beginning of the video. <laughs> that's all you have to watch. Um, if you do exclamation point ND, um, that links to the very first episode. The first episode that I've put out, which is tech, is episode two. <laughs> I did! I went really ham. I bought like a bunch of shit. Um, but it's all like, it's coming piecemeal. So I got three things. Um, I don't know where the rest is yet. <laughs> It's not, I'm not gonna take the time to upload however many hours of footage with messed up audio and messed up video just for the goof. <laughs> that's, that's so much work for something that no one will watch because it's not watchable. <laughs> Thank you. 
Mm. Grove is big, big green zone. Big plants. So, yeah. Also, um, shout out to Sparkle Ghost. Sparkle Ghost got on a call with me and taught me how to do the like built in camera. Um, but because I can't ever just like do anything in a way where it works the first time and is professional and looks nice, um, I still have the like little overlay that's on the bottom. So there's a there's a thing that shows the front of moral while I'm like RPing, which is really fun. I'm really excited to like watch that in the in the video. So basically it's like picture in picture. So you'll see the first person view of walking around and then down here in the corner is like a tiny moral and you can see like what I'm doing basically. Um which is fun. Uh but <laughs> uh the the overlay um there's like a little line popping up here because the intention was that like a like a camera go here uh and i did not size it to that size because i didn't want to i was like oh i can make it whatever size i want i'll just make myself a little bit bigger than that not thinking about the fact that the overlay would be on top of moral i don't know how to explain this but when you see the footage you'll be like oh there's just like a tiny little line that just goes through my body for the entirety of the footage it's good nothing can ever nothing can ever look really good you know because <laughs> that would be crazy <laughs> Odd that the picture-in-picture -picture camera wouldn't be under the overlay. It is under the overlay, yeah. So the overlay is, is on top because the picture-in-picture -picture is... The way that it works is you basically take... You, you take your model... Poor Sparkle was like, okay, so what version of Unity do you have? And I was like... Like sparkle, I don't, I don't have any. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I don't uh, talk to me like I know how to turn on a computer, and that's it. <laughs> They're like, okay. <laughs> um. So now I know. Uh, you basically like open up your model inside of Unity, and then you take this pre-built camera, and you put it onto your model and then you tell it like how much of yourself you want it to show. And then when you open up the game, I don't know how this works, but uh, when you open up the game, you still see VR chat as it normally is. So I don't see a tiny moral in the corner. I actually kind of wish that I could so that I could see like my facial expressions and stuff, but like, um, because you have to manually change your facial expressions, which is something I do a little. I didn't do it at all in the second episode, but I do it a little bit in the in the third. Because it's a wedding. But anyways, uh, yeah. And so um, the game looks totally normal to you, but then uh, when you capture it in a streaming software, when you do like a game capture it will capture the game and a tiny you and put it in the corner, which is so cool. So it just does it for you and you don't have to futz around with shit. Um, so it's amazing. Uh, but just forgot about the overlay. I just forgot that the overlay existed. Tense music, I know. Hold on, let me change what's going on here. <sighs> Let's do some of this. Yeah, again, I have no idea. I mean, I didn't even know. <laughs> Sparkle was like, does Moral have dynamic bones? I was like, Sparkle. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> they literally had to like, look. <coughs> Canonically, Moral does not have bones. 
the model does have bones. <laughs> we found that out. How busy was Morals Diner? Super duper busy because everybody we basically are right across from the grove and the grove is where the wedding was so anybody who is coming to the wedding swung by to be like i need a coffee and you know some egg eggy bakey uh before this wedding so there were just a shit ton of people coming in and like grabbing food and grabbing drinks and just like chilling before the wedding happened and then the wedding happened and then the reception was in the cafe um, and then, uh, some like other stuff happened and it was quiet for a little bit. And then near the end of the episode, for whatever reason, I opened it up for one specific person because they were, they were like hanging out waiting for something. And I was like, oh, I can just open up the cafe. I'm not doing shit right now. I'm waiting for somebody. Um, and people came in and started like ordering stuff. And I was like, <laughs> okay. I thrive on cafe RP, I've found out. Yeah, I do have to say, I do really, now that I've used the index controllers for a while, I, I absolutely prefer the Vive controllers when it comes to expressions specifically. Um, because on the Vive controller, you can, um, where, is, where are my Vive controllers? I'm not sure. But on the Vive controller, it's got like a like a circular trackpad basically, and um, you can set it up so that uh, depending on where on the trackpad you put your finger, the the face changes. So you're able to really quickly like be happy and then and then you know like smiling and then not smiling and then you know mad while you say one thing and then let go and not be mad anymore, right? And um, it's just, it's, it's just weird. It's just weird trying to do it with the index controller and be, <laughs> and be like, ah, yes, you've told me something sad. One moment. Expressions, sad. Wow, I had no idea. <laughs> like it's, it's just not nearly as like, um, I don't know if immersive is the right word, but like you just, you have less reactionary value, I guess. Mm -hmm. Index is poop for small hands also. Yes, very true. I do like, I like that it even remotely tracks my fingers, but like most of, the, I literally, no matter how often I try to like reconfigure it and do like the finger waves and all of this other stuff to be like, these are where my fingers are. It can never figure out where my pinky is ever. So when you're watching Moral in this footage, if it looks like I'm constantly doing this, <laughs> like talking with the, the pinky just always out, that's why, that's why. It's because it doesn't know where my pinky is and it just leaves it, it just leaves it out in the open. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Good shit. Yeah, Moral's a fancy bitch, you know? <laughs> I also got to do some DM rolls in this. Um, like ping a DM and ask for roles to make things. So, and interacted with a bunch of characters that I did not interact with in the second episode. So I, I think that it'll be good, like back-to-back -back episodes, you know? <clears throat> yeah. And so far, have not gotten in trouble for the 16 redacteds that I submitted, so. So I'm still waiting for that. <laughs> Are you 
Are you doing Hellions again next week, or was that a one-off? Uh, I I am a guest for uh, a few episodes, at least four. And I gave them a bunch of feedback because I saw you guys talking about specific things kind of over and over again um, in regards to watching it. So I went to them. I went to I went to our DM and to Nick, and I was basically like, "Hey." Are, I assume that you guys are open to critique and like suggestions and they were like, absolutely. So some of the things that you guys, um, some of the things that you guys uh, mentioned a bunch, I brought up to them and they've been sort of workshopping like how to do things better and make it a bit more like accessible to watch. And also to like give people a better idea of like what, um, uh, trying to think of what to say I'm trying to give chat a better idea of what it is that they're watching because i think that there's an assumption that you're going to see roles and you're going to see maps and stuff like that and hellions is very theater of the mind so yeah so uh you know just gave them some some feedback and suggestions based on what you guys said and so i think if you had trouble following the episode that you watched last time if you watched it last time I think this next one is going to be easier to follow if you're interested. What are morals pronouns? I'm just wondering. Um, moral goes by any pronouns. I just use, I use they them because. But um. Yeah, moral doesn't really care about it at all. So. So there, there are characters that call moral she. There are characters that call moral he. There are characters that call moral they. Like it's a, it's a grab bag, um, which I think is exactly how it should be <laughs> for this character. So moral is moral, exactly. Cordbread Kent, have a good day. Oh, <laughs> Summer sent a Valentine that says, for the boo, happy four years. I know he's lurking while Elden raging. <laughs> Yeah, I was saying to Como, I was like, if I had thought like earlier, maybe I mentioned this yesterday, but I was like, if I had, if I had thought earlier um, to come to them about like, uh, you know, an outfit for Moral to wear to a wedding, I probably would have asked for it to be way more outrageous than it was. But as it was, it was kind of perfect. It was literally <clears throat> a both like normal outfit and then a bow tie. And then they have a they have a patch that says band. And so it had a little piece of paper that made it so it says banger wedding. <laughs> and people kept being like, what the fuck does that say? It was so perfect. So yeah, it was very good. Yeah, it was fun. The whole episode was fun. So yeah, I'll edit that up. Um, maybe tonight. I don't think I have much going on tonight. <sighs> Anywho, I made more patterns today. I'm in a sewing mood now. I had so much fun just like sitting on the couch and sewing this. I also, I sewed some of it uh, last night, like during manga pod and stuff. I was like, this is fun. It's fun to just have something around to just like futz with. So I was like, Clarky, I'm gonna try and make you a shoe. She was like, oh. <laughs> so I had, to, I had to cut out a bunch of pieces of paper to make a shoe for my Clarky now. <laughs> 
<clears throat> Are you enjoying editing without the press the pressure of press heart? It's really interesting editing again. Um for a totally different channel, yeah, because I f I feel like I can just kind of do whatever I want and I've forgotten how to do a lot of stuff. So I'm having to like relook up how to do kind of basic things occasionally. Um but yeah, I mean any of you who who watched it, it's like much memeier than anything else that I've ever <laughs> I've ever edited. <laughs> Um, and it's not even that meme -y, but like, it's like, there's a decent number of like meme goofs in there. And, um, and it was fun. It was fun to just do that, you know? <gasps> You're plastering. Oh my goodness. Have a good day. Oh my god, that quote, Rikia. I know Anime Man has said they like having a second channel because it gives them more freedom to do off-brand stuff. Yeah, I think that makes sense. That's like, um, can't you do what you want on the main channel also? Uh, I mean, there is a lot of, for me, and you, as a viewer, you might say that doesn't exist, but as the person who owns the channel, for me, there is a lot of pressure about what I put on Press Heart next. Like a ton of mental pressure about it. If I were to put something on there, right? Um, so, yeah. To have a channel, to put a video on a channel that at the time that I uploaded had five, no, had no subscribers when I uploaded the video. Um, and just kind of quietly be like, hey, by the way, that moral video's up. <laughs> you know, I haven't tweeted it or anything. There's been something really nice about that. But uh, what I was gonna say is I know that um, like Alex, Alex, number one Alex, um, yeah, he, he has a second channel, like a second streaming channel specifically to do stuff that like he feels is kind of like, is a little bit off brand for him, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, like, in terms of analytics, if you want to talk about it from that perspective, too, that there is also uh, an element there if you care about your analytics, which a lot of people do. <laughs> um, like, consistency of viewership numbers, um, like, consistency of concurrent viewers is really important with streaming. Um, so sometimes people will make a second channel to basically be like, these are the things that I know are not going to get the same number of viewers as what I normally do so that my main channel can have a lot of consistency in numbers and other stuff that I want to do, but I know isn't going to get good viewership can happen on the other channel. And that way my analytics on this page are, are pretty like even you know or or go up hopefully so there's also that for some people <laughs> or they make one to make content they normally don't do right which is what we talked about first i'm saying like from an analytics perspective <laughs> That's, that's a reason to have a second streaming channel.
Would I ever make a second Twitch channel? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I've gone this long with like, you know, doing Final Fantasy on Tuesday nights and that definitely viewership wise doesn't get the same number. Um, you know, I've tried to just not worry about it really. <laughs> The Barbie, yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Hi, Carla. Yeah, that might also be why, because I've changed my schedule and changed my, you know, what I'm doing so often on this channel that, like, <laughs> it, uh, it doesn't feel like it matters really that much for me, but... Yeah, MangaPod also doesn't get very, very good viewership. And we've tried to figure out w what we would need to do differently, but but I don't know. If you guys have uh, feedback about MangaPod, aside from the inconsistency of like doing it, which I think is a is part of it, um, but if you have MangaPod feedback, uh, feel free to to leave it in the Discord. I mean, Final Fantasy XIV doesn't get, well, it depends on who you are. <laughs> Generally, Final Fantasy XIV doesn't get super good viewership anyway. It's not like a big view poll, you know? Not everyone reads manga. I would argue as a person who listens to a lot of podcasts that are people talking about things that they've read and I've never read that thing and I never ever will. I don't think that matters if it's entertaining enough. You know, so. So I'm wondering if it's like, if it's our format, if it's, I don't know. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm curious what it is that uh, that holds us back, you know? Are you planning on streaming Elden Ring? Not anytime soon. Not anytime soon, for sure. seeing a thing flying around in here and then it vanishes and I can't find it. I honestly never know when MangaPod is or I would tune in. Okay. This is all good. This is all good. This is good for us to know. It, we've changed the day that it happens quite a few times because with time zones and our schedules and stuff and like two of us are parents and one of us has a, a job that's like occasionally super demanding. Um, so uh, we've had to change stuff up fairly often, uh, which is another thing that doesn't help. Mm. I feel like I never know when it is or what everyone is reading. Hmm. Maybe like, because it happens on Fridays, maybe we try to consistently like, on Mondays, say this week we're reading this, 
join us on Friday and then do another tweet on Friday and then try to make sure that all of us at the very least retweet it. If it helps, I'm just learning that you still do MangaPod. That does help. That does help. It sounds like a lot of people just don't know when it's happening or that it is happening, so. Maybe a little pop-up on stream like the one for Dodger Coffee. That's not a bad idea as well. Hold on, I'm gonna put this in our MangaPod chat. We have a Discord channel, yeah. We do, we do. Do you do a tweet that you're going live with MangaPod like you do with normal streams? From the MangaPod Twitter, yes. Short trailer each week to give new viewers an idea about what's going on and a recap for regular viewers. So it's a different manga every week. Um, so a recap isn't necessary, but um, I'm wondering if we can do like because at the end, at the end of each manga pod episode, we do like a like a reading of the summary for the next manga, and then people try to guess what the manga is. Is like the idea. So we try to make it a game. Like we'll read the summary, but like edit out words. I'm wondering if like clipping that could be fun, and then putting that on Twitter. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's a book club. So like the, the format of MangaPod, for any of you who haven't watched it before, is the beginning is we give a summary of what we read, like a spoiler-free summary of the manga. And then we all, in as spoiler-free of a way as possible, say whether or not we enjoyed it, basically. Like, do we think it's good? Do we think you should go read it? Um, and then the rest of, of the stream, uh, we give everybody a big heads up and then the rest of the stream is us like in depth talking about what we read with spoilers So the hope the idea and and the overlay changes to show like spoilers not spoilers. So the hope is that You know that people would show up even if they Even if they only wanted to show up for the beginning to see whether or not like it wound up being good You know if it's worth their time um, but I don't know if there winds up being a whole lot of value in that. Next week's manga, we're continuing Jujutsu Kaisen. Which we're very excited about. <laughs> We've read it once before, so we get to read some more. 
Yeah, I love it. I love the manga. I love the anime. The anime is fucking fantastic. I can't wait for more of that anime, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's always on my channel. It wasn't. It wasn't before. Um, but it's on my channel now. Yeah. Yep, different manga every week, and we return to ones that we really liked. So, um, you know, some manga is just like, you can't read it all in a week. <laughs> um, but you can read like maybe the first arc or the first couple of volumes and get an idea of like whether or not you're enjoying it. So uh, for some of the bigger, like long running things, yeah, we'll just read like the first two volumes or something and sort of like talk about how we felt about those first two volumes. And we're normally pretty much on the same page on whether or not we want to read more in the future, so. So you could do a recap for returning manga. Well, again, the issue with that is that the whole beginning of the episode is spoiler free. So to try and recap what everything that we read in the first part is like, could, to me, seems like it would be a decent chunk of time. So I don't know. I'm not sure what the right answer is. It's an hour long podcast, so. What site do you use to read manga? Um, if it's been licensed and translated into English, um, like we don't we don't like police each other about where we're reading stuff. I will buy it if I can, um, because I'm able to just buy manga now. So uh, I it's nice to do that. <laughs> um, so I'll I'll always buy it. <clears throat> if possible. But there are some things we've read that just aren't aren't licensed and translated into English officially, so we read scanlations, you know. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes people are really, really jazzed about, say, an anime that's coming out, but the manga for that anime isn't translated yet, or isn't isn't licensed yet, or um, or there's a manga that's like really taken off, but nobody's grabbed it yet somehow. Um, it's rare that that happens, but. Yeah, we've we've had a lot of guests in the past. We've normally focused on people who are already in the anime and manga community, like on YouTube, um, or like good friends of ours. Uh, the issue is that generally it's fine, but occasionally you have somebody who just doesn't do the reading, <laughs> who just doesn't read it, you know? Um, so it's, it's hard to say to somebody, Hey, can you be on a podcast? You're going to need to do a bunch of reading before the podcast. Right. And some people will say absolutely no problem. And then they'll forget. I've, d I've done it. I'm on it every week and I've done this. Right. But, um, you know, sometimes, yeah, people will will show up on the day and be like, I gotta be honest with you guys, I totally forgot that we were doing this, you know? Um, so yeah. Literally yesterday, yesterday, Aaron sent a message to all of us being like, hey, um, are we doing manga pod tonight? And I had completely forgotten that because, you know, because we've been so off and on, I wasn't even thinking about manga pod really. Um, 
And I had said on stream, like, I don't think we're doing Manga Pod. And then Aaron was like, we're doing Manga Pod, right? And I was like, oh. <laughs> and fortunately, we, it was like for the manga that we read two weeks ago, because Aaron got sick. So I was like, oh, thank God. I already did the reading, because otherwise I would have been hosed. So yeah, yeah, I, to I totally space it sometimes as well. Maybe that's why it's got so little viewership, which is the first thing that I said, yeah. Is that, um, you know, Aaron's gotten COVID, I don't know how many times, and the stomach flu and whatever else. Um, you know, sometimes Moeka has to work for 24 hours straight to like get work done and then, you know, just didn't, just can't do it, you know, like, there's all sorts of reasons that sometimes we cancel or move the schedule around or anything like that. So yeah, that was the first thing I said is I realized that this is a barrier, that this is the inconsistency is probably a big part of it. Um, but <laughs> is the schedule more set now i mean hope hopefully <laughs> currently this works um it's never it's you know it's never going to be perfect for everybody because we're in different time zones as well so what can you do Yeah, Moika, Moika streams and does music, um, but is also uh, does a lot of voice acting stuff. And so um, sometimes the voice acting job can be like really, uh, it re requires a lot from her. <laughs> so. I don't know how long we've been doing manga pod. Years. <laughs> so long. <laughs> A really, really long time. We did read My Hero. We've read quite a bit of My Hero, yeah. <sighs> Mangapod is like twice Clarky's age. That's crazy. Clarky, oh, I love her. <laughs> oh. She dressed herself today. It was a it was a disaster outfit. It's so good. And then was like, I'm going to go spend time with my daddy. And I'm going to go take a class. And it's going to be fun. And I was like, good. Enjoy yourself. It was like bright red sweatpants, like track pants. And then um, basically a sparkly blue ball gown. And then on top of the ball gown um, is a heavily stained white jumper with hearts all over it. So the heart theme worked. The heart the heart theme is there. Colors completely off, but it doesn't matter. Um and then uh light up high top pink shoes with unicorns on them. And then she wanted her hair in a ponytail. So she looked incredible. <laughs> I know. I love it. I love that she wants to dress herself now. I think it's so cute. And it's really interesting because she's like, she understands 
when things go together, but in the moment of picking an outfit, she, there, whatever it is that she wants to wear, she will try to put all of those things together, you know? <laughs> like, like she'll look at two things and be like, oh my gosh, those match because the trousers have pink flowers and the shirt has pink squares and they're the same color pink, right? Like that kind of a thing. She'll notice those sorts of things. But when she's trying to get dressed, it's just like, I wanna wear those and I wanna wear that and I wanna wear that and I wanna wear that and I'm just gonna put them on, <laughs> you know? It's very fun. <laughs> Go, little rock star. <sighs> oh, when I was about five, I dressed myself. I dressed in plaid clothing. I dressed by the pattern, not the color. So I had very different color plaid clothing on. I love that. I think that's great. I can't wait for the day when Clark tells Duke she has no fashion sense. We're basically already here. <laughs> We're basically here already. <clears throat> She'll mention it if she's seen me wear the same sweater like three days in a row. <laughs> there you are. Hello. Are you just a, a big fly? Yeah, it's just a real thick fly. Mom, your drip is weak. No. Oh no, I wear the same sweater three days in a row. Look, I... <sighs> You know, with with things like jumpers and sweaters and stuff, in my opinion, if you want to wear that for a few days in a row and the pits ain't stinky, then wear it a few days in a row, right? Like... <laughs> The, the amount of clothing that I have that goes into the wash because um, I get chicken poop on it or, you know, like, or something like that where I'm like, man, I could have worn that for a couple more days. But, you know, that's, that's my life, so... My grandma got me ready for school. It was monochrome 90s colors all the time. Red pants, red shirt, red scrunchie. Incredible. My 12 year old niece called me out on my fashion and one day she looked at me and said, Uncle Jay is all you wear t-shirts with graphics? No! That's rude. <laughs> I've got to stop because you can even tell in the camera, you can see the spots where my lips are like really upset. <laughs> I've got to stop biting or they won't heal. <laughs> Oh, 
My two-year-old niece gave me a disgusted look up and down when I walked out in my giant, ugly orange shirt. We've all got things that are ugly, but so comfortable, you know? Again, shout out to my old Tasmanian devil shirt that my mom threw away and she claimed she didn't, but I know, I know that she did. And young me knew that she did. <laughs> it was, it was so ugly and it had huge holes in it. And I know why she threw it out, but I loved that shirt so much. <laughs> have Taz slippers, but no idea what happened to them. I had an ugly Joker shirt that got tossed. They did it to protect us, to save us from ourselves. My parents also did that with shoes because there was a pair of shoes that I, a pair of old Keds. I wore them until the soles literally would not stay on the shoe anymore. And my dad was like, you have to start wearing some of your other shoes. Cause it's not that I didn't have other shoes to wear. It's that they were the only shoes I wanted to wear forever. And, and my dad was like, people are going to think that we don't take care of you. Like I'm, I'm begging you, I'm begging you to wear other shoes. And then my mom took me to Fred Meyer. Cause that's where I got the OG kids. She took me back to Fred Meyer so that we could try and find shoes that were like these ones that I loved so much and we could not find them. And I was really upset. <laughs> they were so comfy, dude. But my, keep in mind also, uh, I lived in, in a part of the US where it just rained constantly. Um, so, Having shoes with soles that were literally falling off of them is not really an option. Like my feet were always wet. It was really bad, but I just loved these shoes. And my dad was like, you, please, <laughs> please wear some of your other shoes so that we don't get a call from somebody being like, hey, <laughs> will you please buy your daughter some shoes? <laughs> I don't remember my parents ever making a big stink about the holes in my jeans. I don't remember that ever being a thing, really. <sighs> but the shoes, understandably, were, a, were an issue. <laughs> said you take damage like it's a game it's true your feet take damage uh with, when you have bad shoes on i think my mom was just um so relieved that i wasn't asking for you know knockoff jinkos anymore <laughs> because that was the phase that was the phase that made my mom go, honey, honey. <laughs> Cause I'm short, right? I'm short. And I was like, I want jeans 
that where the leg of the jean is about as wide as my torso, and I also want them to dra be about maybe a foot longer than my legs are, and I want them to just drag in the water all day long. Can that be a thing, mom, for fashion? And she was like, <laughs> surely, surely <laughs> this isn't what's happening right now. Yeah, any of you who are who are a teen, who are a teen, if you were a teen when Jinkos were big, shout out. <laughs> yeah, I do think about that. <clears throat> The weight of them with the soaked up water, what a workout, yeah. And you also had like, you basically walked like a horse cause you felt like you had to sort of like kick the leg of the, of the jeans forward so that you didn't trip, right? Damn. Oh yeah, oh yeah, wait a second, I'm sorry. Some of you seem confused. I'm gonna try I'm gonna try and find some pictures of this. <clears throat> oh hell yeah. Yep. Oh my god. Yeah, this. 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 <laughs> <laughs> this sort of thing. Yeah. Um, yep. Uh, but for whatever reason at my school, they needed to be, they needed, they had to completely cover your foot. <clears throat> they had to totally cover your foot. You couldn't see your foot at all, or they were too short. Um, and, uh, it also, you wanted like a little bit of bagginess. So they needed to actually be too long, too long for you, right? And again, growing up somewhere where it was raining all the time, this was such a fucking mistake. But, <laughs> but we did it anyway. Yes, each leg had its own skirt, basically. Yeah. Are Jinkos back? I'm gonna get some. I don't, I think they tried. They tried to bring them back. How are you, Nick? They tried to bring them back, but I don't think that it stuck. I think people were like, I think enough of us immediately were like, don't, <laughs> don't do this. <laughs> um, There are some things that uh, I would love to come back because I think I could I could thrive. Um, the uh, uh, two stretchy tank tops on top of each other. I could like the 2000s, the 2000s vibes of that. I could do that. Um, I still don't think I could pull off, or nor would I want to pull off scene hair, but I would be really excited to see people with some like really good scene hair again. I can't do skirts over trousers again. Oh, I was so into that. I definitely did that because again, as you guys know, skirts and dresses and I don't always get along. So I was like, if I just wear trousers and then put a skirt on over the trousers, it fixes everything. <laughs> so I did that for a hot minute, yeah. I 
wanted seen hair so bad and my mom wouldn't let me and I'm now so glad. I'm kind of like, I feel like when I go back, I've done a lot of hair colors, but in terms of hairstyles, I'm kind of jealous of the people who can go back and find like such distinct hairstyles in their, in their youth, you know? <laughs> and be like, oh man, this was my, you know, this was my scene hair phase. This is when I had a mohawk. This is when I did X, Y, or Z, you know? Why don't you paint your nails often anymore? I've never painted my nails super often. I go through periods of time where I paint them more. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I uh, sometimes just don't want them to be painted. I more often than not don't want them painted. But then I'll, yeah, sometimes I'll have a month where I want them painted all the time, so. The duality of dukes. <laughs> I rocked a mullet in the late 80s. A year or so ago, I was getting a haircut. I've been going to the same person for several years. She asked what we were doing today and I asked for a mullet. She pointed to the door and said, get out. What? But mullets are so in right now. You should go back and be like, Duger says, <laughs> I know you don't know who Duger is, but that doesn't matter. Duger says that mullets are in. <laughs> Wolf cuts? What the fuck is a wolf cut? Okay. These look pretty, this looks like pretty normal hair. <laughs> kind of like a layered shag that has like some mullet elements to it it looks like I really need to get Sam to shave the back of my head because I really liked it shaved and it has grown way too long now I went to look finally I had avoided looking for so long and I went to look and I was like oh my god <laughs> Sorry, Telly. I haven't kept up with it. I'm gonna shave my head this week, I think. I, um, was it Octo? I think Octo was talking about shaving his head and I was like, Octo, I really wanna shave my head this summer. Do you wanna do it with me? And he was like, hell yeah. <laughs> I'm done with hair, hair is canceled. You shaved your head a few times, haven't you, Nick? My favorite thing is the shaved head and then it grows back in. And then you like, when people like bleach it and then either do like designs on the like little bit of hair that they have or just make it all like a super bright color, even though it's really short. <clears throat> it like, it must last for literally a day, but I still love it. <laughs> Yeah, I really like where I have it. Um, 
but I don't, because it's literally my nape, I don't trust myself to shave it myself, you know? Don't do it in the winter, you'll re quickly realize how much your hair keeps you warm. Uh, yeah, I got this nape cut uh, during winter. And <laughs> the second that it started, I looked at Telly and I was like, I did not pick the right time of year to do this. And Telly was like, I think the first time I shaved my head, it was in the middle of winter. <laughs> We're like, well, <laughs> what are you gonna do? It was kind of awesome though. It was sort of awesome because I realized really quickly, like, holy shit, this is a part of my head that for like, you know, 34 years has had hair on it. <laughs> and it still had a little bit of hair, right? But like, that part of my head has never been cold, not truly cold <laughs> until it was shaved. And then I was like, holy shit. Damn, but it felt awesome. They're having fun. Sam and Clarky are, are taking a class together. It's very cute. Well, both both cousins, so it's Clarky and River, our niece, and they're like besties. They're they're taking a class together and the dads are taking them, so it's like a little daddy daughter date. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's a beginner's D and D class. <laughs> You shave it during summer be careful not to get a sunburn on your scalp oddly enough not not something i would have thought of so thank you for that heads up as well Yo, does Fossabot also have alternate text for hi Fossabot? Cause most of the time when people use the command hi Fossabot, Fossabot says I'm not that kind of bot, but occasionally it'll say hi back. <laughs> and I'm always like, it's so coy. It has a cool down on it chat. It has a cool down on it. You can't just spam it. This is now a Fossabot dating sim. Oh no. Hmm. <laughs> Wow, 
Wow, I actually, well, I mean, I'm gonna crash later, but like so far, actually, I'm feeling okay. I was up at 12.30. Clark woke up at 12.30, which is why I woke up at 12.30. 12.30 a.m. Um, and then she slept straight through until like a little after six, basically like 6.05. So I wasn't able to stick around for like hanging out with anybody after Neon Divide was over. Um, but I did get through the episode, so I'm gonna call that a fucking win. Yeah, it went great. Yeah, this uh, this episode I was saying I think is gonna be really good. So, yeah. Neon Divide starts at, again, for anybody who doesn't know this, Neon Divide starts at 2 a.m. for me. There is a pre-episode meeting that happens at 1 a.m. Um, that's basically like, um, any general story stuff people need to know, any updates, like tech updates that people need to know. Um, so like for this episode, there was a huge wedding. So they were basically like anybody who doesn't need to be in Undercity, don't go to Undercity because it's going to be packed. Um, but also like X, Y, and Z is happening. So be aware of that in RP, like that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, we added some new medicine items. So check the crafting desk. You might be able to make some new things, right? Like just anything like that that you need to know before we do the episode. So that's normally from 1 to 1.30. And then at 1.30, everybody loads into the game. Um, and, uh, you know, loads maps and all of that sort of stuff. But <clears throat> yeah, so up at 12.30. And then... And then Clarky, it was it was so weird. It was so weird to be like talking with somebody in VR and then just feel a tiny hand on my hand. And I was like, a child? I love that little green bird. Rewind? Rewind is great. I did not see Rewind this episode. Rewind was one of the people that was like, I don't need to be there. Um, pretty sure the couple hates me. So I'm gonna go ahead and be on a different map so that there's more room for other people. Doing good. Doing all right. How could they hate moral? No, 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 no. Like the people who are getting married. Um, there's a character who's a little green bird named Rewind, and Rewind spent basically the entire second episode um, harassing the groom <laughs> for this wedding. So Rewind was like, I think it's probably best if I don't go to that wedding. <laughs> so because somebody was like, I really love the green bird. I was just saying, you won't see them in episode three. They were not on the map and I was on Undercity map the whole time, so. Yes, the one with the tape recorder. Yeah, rewind's great. <sighs> Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you know. <clears throat> There's over 150 players, something like that. Um, so, like, imagine a D&D &D game 
where everybody has, you know, really thrown themselves into making a cool character, but it's like over a hundred people have all made a cool character and they're all in maps together and just like interact. Um, everybody, everybody's weird. Everyone is weird. Everyone's got something going on. Um, it's, it's really fun. Mm. But yeah, uh, if you want to watch my my first episode ever of Moral, just being Moral, um, I uploaded that. You can do exclamation point ND, and there's a link to the YouTube. It's the first video I've edited in like three years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like a huge LARP with four maps. And they try to keep it constrained to 50 people per map. So when you load in at the like respawn area, which is like the respawn area is RP card down, just like people loading in and like getting themselves sorted before they go onto the map officially. There's a big sign that says the population, like the number of people who are on the map at the time. And <laughs> there have been there have been times where you load into the undercity map and it's just a bright red sign that's like, please leave. If you don't need to be here, I'm begging you, please leave. It'll be like, there are 64 people on the map. <laughs> please. <laughs> um, but it's hard because sometimes there's already a bunch of people on the map and there's like a planned thing where like a huge group, you know, for story purposes is showing up, like a huge group of people. And there's not really like anything you can do about it, you know? So I got kicked from the map, I think three times. And uh, a couple times I, last night, and a couple times I voluntarily left the map and then tried to load back in because I had a bug that happens sometimes when a bunch of people are popping onto the map at once. Uh, there's a bug that occasionally happens where you just can't hear anybody. So I like vanished from the cafe and then uh, loaded back in, walked back to the cafe and people were trying to talk and I couldn't hear anyone. And so I had to just like, like turn around and leave <laughs> and then try to reload back in and it didn't work, so I had to close the entire game and reopen it, it was so silly. So I have no idea if anybody was talking to me during that, no clue. But um, fortunately, VR chat bugs are so common that there's just kind of an assumption, like they're probably, <laughs> you know, they're, they're probably struggling with some, like if you're talking with somebody and and they'll say like, I'm sorry, I've got a really bad headache. It probably means there's something wrong with their headset, right? There's like ways to like clue to people like, sorry, I can't, I can't do X, Y, or Z right now, you know? <laughs> to be fair, I too sometimes walk into a room, look at the people talking to me and then turn around and leave. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. That's what people in GTA RP do too when they talk to someone. Yeah. And you know, in VR, sometimes people will like teleport around the map or their uh, their model will suddenly just like contort. That's happened to the moral model quite a few times where I've been talking to someone and they'll be like, are you okay? It looks like It looks like something's wrong with your leg. And I'll look down and I'll realize my whole model is just like twisted into like some sort of body horror amalgamation. And I have to be like, oh, that's pretty weird. I'll be right back. <laughs> or like, um, I cut it out of the second episode because it was so long, but there was a, a, a section at the end of the episode uh, the second episode where I was talking with a character named Shiloh, who's awesome. He's just like super easy to talk to, but like there was a point in there where he was like 
just suddenly running backwards and then would have to kind of like casually walk back to us. <laughs> We're like, you good? And he's like, yeah, yeah, you know, just legs. <laughs> Sometimes you just get excited and you, and you just gotta run away. <laughs> like just, you, it's just funny. You know, you just have to like laugh. You were hilarious with Quinn, thank you. I was really glad that I got to hang out with Quinn a little bit. Cause I think Quinn is so fucking funny, like the most toxic character by far. <laughs> and we've out of character, I've been like, I want Quinn and Moral to be friends so bad. And Quinn was like, I know, but like, they're both such menaces in like totally different ways. Like. <laughs> Like, I don't know, I don't know how it would ever work, but if it does, man. <laughs> but yeah, it's very, fa I, you know, and again, it's just so funny to me, like out of character, I know that there's really serious, like awful shit happening with other people's characters and other stories. <laughs> And meanwhile, literally my character, mostly like like three out of the four hours of RP is just running a cafe. <laughs> yeah, Quinn is QWERTY's character. Quinn is like a, um, <clears throat> like kind of an e-boy. Uh, an e-boy-esque like synth, like a robot that wants to be an influencer. Um, and they're just so mean, like just really mean to everybody <laughs> all the time. <laughs> but also, but in a way where you're like, oh God, they really want friends. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's so funny. Like they're just such a weird, like shitty character. <laughs> What did Moral put in the drink this time? Yo, that, yeah. Oh my God, I need to put that in my episode recap for in, in the cast discord, but like, Moral might have made the first synth coffee that synths actually enjoy drinking. That's pretty big pog, you know? <clears throat> I have to get other synths to drink it though is the problem. And a lot of them do not, a lot of their models do not have mouths. <laughs> I realized this once I already decided like a bunch of synths came in asking for oil and we didn't have oil and Moral was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a weird like oil coffee thing for synths because they misunderstood that like they wanted to drink the oil, which is not what they do. <laughs> that is not what they do. But so synths kept coming in and Moral was like, you don't have a mouth. Wait, what the fuck? <laughs> like, <laughs> wait a minute. What is this niche thing that I've started trying to make when half of the robots in this town don't even have mouths? <laughs> like, hmm, okay. Oh my gosh, I used to watch your YouTube videos all the time and this is the first stream I've joined of yours live. Hello, welcome. Welcome, welcome back. Yeah, I stream all the time. I hope you'll swing by. In the future. I did, that's true. I edited my first thing in forever. It's not on the Press Heart channel though, so don't get excited. <laughs> But I did, I did make a, I made a thing. And I'm very proud. And there's dead Barbies in my room. And a puzzle. So, you know, we're thriving here. I'm talking about Neon Divide. 
I'm talking about Neon Divide. <laughs> I will not actively work on Peppa D and D until Joe actually announces a date for his Twilight RPG. Until then, I won't believe that he's actually doing it, and I have I have hooked my cart onto the horse of Joe's game. So. In one of the web comics I read, androids will order aromatic teas just to smell them. Um, I, I'm wondering if it would be fun to like, next time Quinn comes in, to be like, I want, <laughs> be again because their whole thing is being like an influencer, to have Moral be like, I want, I want to use you as a consultant, <laughs> to like figure out like like what the synths really want you know <clears throat> and see if they take that bait <laughs> mm. i told joe to use made rpg for the twilight rpg he wants to do a one-shot that's based on Twilight because, well, I think he promised he was going to do a one-shot based on Twilight and has not done it yet. And it's been a very long time. Um, and uh, yeah, I was like, you should do Maid RPG because Maid RPG is literally the DM is a person that all of the players are trying to impress, um, basically. So I was like, I feel like you could tweak Made RPG to make it so that you are, you know, Kristen Stewart. <laughs> and everybody else has to play a character that's trying to get with Kristen Stewart. <laughs> right? Like, I think, I, I think this could work. Also, also, I feel like um, that would make it the most funny <laughs> to use a, a base of like a really weird, basically harem TTRPG game and like, and just adjust that to be Twilight. I think that would be the funniest version of this show, you know? Joe went to look it up and was like, this is the longest fucking rule set I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> he was like, what have you done? never watched Twilight. Do the vampires actually do vampire stuff or is it a rom-com? It is not a rom-com at all. It is, it's a, it's a, um, kind of melodrama basically about, about vampires, about, about teens. <laughs> um, that's not a phone. And also if it falls off, you know, it falls off. It's, yeah, it's not, I can't think of a single moment in Twilight that's funny. <laughs> I, I haven't, I, uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of Twilight, so I have seen it, but, um, 
I don't think I've seen any of the movies more than once, and I definitely have never watched the last one, and I've never read the books. But I can't remember ever, I can't remember ever laughing. So any any attempts at saying like, is it a comedy at all? I don't think, I don't think so. <laughs> Yeah, it's, okay. It is not intentionally funny ever, I don't think. Can you do the wine challenge and give everybody a bottle of wine and be crying laughing about five minutes into the movie? Yes, you can. <laughs> but not because it, it was trying to be funny. <laughs> the first 15 or so minutes and stopped after Edward smelled Kristen Stewart and looked like he was gonna pass out so in my head canon it's a rom-com now to be fair there's a very similar scene in Hannibal and they don't make it seem as ridiculous so <laughs> The worst part about the movies to me is I'm named Bella, so it's very jarring. Yeah, I could see that. My uh, my meat space name is Brooke, so I don't I don't typically run into situations where characters have my name. It's extremely rare, but I think about that sometimes. Like people who have more common names, like how weird is that? Or is it weird anymore if you have a really common name that winds up getting used in shows a lot? <laughs> the baseball game scene had no right slapping so hard. Oh my God. You get used to it. I know so many people with my name. Yeah. <laughs> Did you keep up with what we do in the shadows? Yeah, of course. It's like one of Sam and my favorite shows to watch together. Yeah, I wouldn't say that it's like a rare name, Brooke. I don't think Brooke is a rare name, but it's not it's not a name that's used a ton, you know. Like I've met a few Brooks in my life. But the name just isn't extremely common for whatever reason. My name is so common. I used to go to class with four other people with the same name and one of them had the same last name, no relations. Yeah. I went to cl I've I've been in school with so many Rachels. Shout out to the Rachels. So many Rachels, Nicoles. Um I'm trying to think what other names were like extremely common when I was growing up. College humor made the stop make naming your kid Mike video. Oh my god. Oh, Amanda's. I've known a lot of Amanda's in my life. And currently, I know and still talk to a ton of Aaron's.
to the point that even with context, when I'm talking with Sam and I start talking about an Aaron, he's like, which one? <laughs> Sarah, yeah. Chris, Chris is another one. Yeah, I've seen a couple of you guys mentioning Chris. I've known a lot of Chris's as well. has at least one friend named Emily. I now know an Emily. I know a new Emily. I'm trying to think if I interact with another Emily, really. It's also hard when like a decent number of your friends are online. And you're like, what are all their real names? <laughs> I was like, I know an Emily and realized that's new Emily. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Your Emily is the new Emily for me. Are we sharing names? I just got back. I was mentioning, um, we were talking about Twilight and somebody said that it's really jarring for them to watch Twilight because their name is Bella. And I was like, yeah, I've never experienced really, I, I have a name that isn't super uncommon, but it's not common enough to show up in shows, right? So I don't know what it's like to watch a show or just to watch TV in general and consistently hear my own name, really. And so I was asking like, what is that like? Um, and now we're just talking about names that wind up, that are like super common. <laughs> I hate that I share my name with the dog from Family Guy. Ah. <sighs> Oh, were you saying you find it really jarring to hear your internet name in things? Oddly enough, I don't, when people are like say playing D&D &D or something and they mention like a dex bonus, I do not associate it with myself whatsoever. I don't ever have even a split second where I think, me? <laughs> Like it, that never, that never happens. I never have a blip where I misunderstand why they said it, you know? Yeah, there was a big thing on the radio about like, um, you know, cause, cause I do turn on the radio occasionally. Uh, there was a big thing on the radio where they were talking about like whether or not people with the name Karen, 
um, are basically being like discriminated against because of their name. And I realize that I have, uh, in the last couple of months, I've met a Karen and, you know, talked with her a few times and talked about her with people. And literally, it didn't occur to me at all that there was anything like specific about the fact that she had the name Karen. And I was like, I think it's fine. I think, I'm sure the Karens are really sick of the joke. Um, but I don't think that people are hating Karens for no reason, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I can appreciate saying like, God, I'm really sick of this joke, right? Um, but I, you know, I'm on the internet a decent amount. I have seen my fair share of Karen jokes and I met a Karen and it did not even for a split second make my brain go like the joke, Karen, like the, like the, like the goof, <laughs> you know? But, but again, I do not have that name and I don't know what it, that's like. Same thing with A-L-E-X-A. -E I have a friend from college named that. And she, oh my God, <laughs> hates it. If that was my name, I would simply go by Axe. Axe would be a pretty metal change of name. <laughs> a bunch of valentines today uh king's warrior said i wanted to say a very warm thank you to everyone that put the hug emote under my update about my cardiologist appointment your support is just amazing and i am truly grateful henry said the number wangs in the discord are very fun i assume this is alex's invention so thanks alex summer again said for the boo happy four years i know he's lurking while elden raging uh, Tomorrow Boy said, I just wanted to send some good vibes to everyone out there. I hope everyone is having a good day. And Periodic Ale said, wishing Dukes and all the lovely folks in chat a lovely day. This community helps to make the world a little bit brighter. I wish I could tune in live more often, but I love watching the VODs on YouTube. Thanks, guys. A bunch of sweet messages. Um... Raid leader is open if anybody would like to suggest a raid. Otherwise, I can absolutely find somebody. And I promise I won't send you to an Elden Ring streamer. Um, but in the meantime, let me read off our activity feed and then we're gonna we're gonna wrap up for our Saturday. Let's see. Malik, thank you for the 52 months. Avi for the gifted sub. Hanged Man for the 53. Melchan Waifu for the 16. Droid you're looking for for the 2. Cornbread Kent for the 14. Cinnamon Kiss for the 15. Avi for more gifted subs. Thank you very much. Dave, thank you for the 29. Eisner Guy for the 61. Steinkey for the 49. Saxaz for the 11. PZN for the 61. Falcon for the 52. Ozdiz for the 52 as well. Gentle Godfather for the 13. Bamba Lamber for the 6 years. Happy anniversary. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I hope you're having a lovely day. 
Dark Shadow, thank you for the 64. Weird Uncle Jay for uh, the gifted sub. Evil Lollipop for the 21. Suze for the 66. Big Bow for the 42. Fatal for All for the 71. But of course, for the five. Eshed Cal for the four years. Happy anniversary. Thank you very much for the support and the love. I appreciate it. An anonymous gifter gifted a sub. Thank you very much. And Velxer, thank you for the 17. Being named Chewbacca might be tight. It certainly could be. <laughs> Who's to say? Really? I'm sure there's one out there. You could probably message them. Okay, not, oh my God. Oh my God, you guys aren't joking. Everyone is playing Elden Ring. What the fuck? Okay, um, let's, oh my God. Uh, okay, well maybe we will go to, let's go say hi to Saijin. It says they are doing a full focus, no talk stream. Oh, but it's also sub only. Hmm. Okay, maybe somebody else. Oh, happy Chef. This will be good. Let's go say hi to Happy Chef. Uh, it's a lovely, a lovely dude who does cooking. Um, his family is adorable. Really good vibes on streams. Uh, so yeah, go say hi to them. I'm gonna take off. Uh, and go do family stuff. My family should be home any minute now. Um, but otherwise, I appreciate you guys so much. I hope you're having a lovely Saturday. And uh, I will see you tomorrow for God Forged. And our next normal stream that's on this channel will be on Monday. Okay? Bye-bye, everybody.